So what is your defining characteristic? Think about that for a sec. If you could pick only one word to describe yourself, what would it be? Well, I asked a few folks on the ministry team that question, and here's what they said. For Kong, it's patient. For Alicia, it's passionate. For Jeremy, it's caring. For Parfois, it's wise. And for me, it's kind. So what would it be for you? What is your defining characteristic? So go ahead and post that in the comments. Go ahead and write it in there and let, let people see what your defining characteristic is. Well, what about for God? What would God's defining characteristic be? Well, it's his holiness. Holiness is the core essence of God. In fact, it's so important the Bible talks about it over 900 times. So what is holiness? So here's a definition. Holiness is the doctrine that God is completely set apart from the rest of creation, including all sin. Holiness is the doctrine that God is completely set apart from all creation, including his sin, including all sin. It's his otherness. It's his uniqueness. It's his total purity. See, the passage that you just read, Isaiah 6, 1 through 8, uh, it paints an incredible picture of God's holiness and our response. And there are four parts to this story that we're going to walk through. So here we go. First, God's holiness is displayed in his greatness. See, Isaiah's vision for God's attempt, or Isaiah's vision is God's attempt to describe himself using human imagery. And, and everything about it was just so extra. And that's the point. God seated on the highest throne. His robe filled the temple. So ladies, imagine your wedding gown filling up the entire church. Even the angels covered their faces because of God's greatness and his glory. See, artists have tried to capture this picture. There's this one. Or this. Or even this. Or this one. Oh, wait. Sorry. That's Thor and Avengers. Uh, sorry. Hey, how'd that get in, in there? I don't know. So, see, there is no king or authority who sits above God. And his majesty is absolutely undiluted. See, God is holy because he alone sits above everything else. He is high and lifted up as the song says. See, all of that greatness elicits the only possible response from the angels. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is, fill, is full of his glory. See, unlike any other being, God is worthy of and receiving continual praise and worship 24 7. so that's the first part that we see now the second part let's look at isaiah's response isaiah responded with self-awareness and with reverent fear he said woe to me i cried i am ruined for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. See, in the presence of God's holiness, Isaiah came face to face with his own unholy condition. And seeing true holiness only highlighted his, his own inadequacy. See, see, then Isaiah feared that that of what would become of him because of God's absolute holiness. He was afraid of what would become of him. He understood something we very often forget. Unholiness 
cannot be in communion with holiness. But see, but then God does something very unexpected. This is part three of the story. God offered purification for Isaiah's unholiness. See, then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which had been taken with tongs from the altar. See, now I would be freaking out at this point. If the six winged angels weren't enough, then all of a sudden one of them takes a live coal from the fire and brings it toward me. And see, mostly because this reminds me of that freaky hot poker scene in Raiders of the Lost Ark. But see, nothing ever, nothing ever good comes out of a hot coal brought over to your face. Except this one. See, then an amazing thing happened. With, here's what it says. With it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. God purified Isaiah. Isaiah said, I am a man of unclean lips. And God replied, yeah, we can fix that. See, God sent an intermediary, the angel, to redeem an unholy person, Isaiah, by sharing a part of himself, his holiness. And that is exactly what God did with Jesus. God sent his son, Jesus, to be an intermediary between himself and his sinful creation, us. God redeems us through the sacrificial death of Jesus. And by believing in Jesus, we can be made holy. So now let's move to the last part, part four. See, Isaiah responded with worship and a willingness to serve God. See, look at Isaiah's response. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. See, he worshipped God because he recognized that he was cleansed. And then he willingly put himself in a place of service to God. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Use me. And that is our response as well. See, when we are cleansed of our sin, we should worship and celebrate the God who had the right to remove us from his presence. But he didn't. Instead, he invited us into relationship with him. And when we are brought into relationship with God, our worship should lead us to a place of willing service for a holy God. So, where are you along this process, along these four steps? Are you at step zero, where you don't even really think about God's holiness or your sinfulness? Or are you at step one? Are you at step one, where you see God's holiness, but you're just not sure quite what to do with it? Are you at step two, where, where God's holiness leads you to focus or even obsess over your own sinfulness? Are you at step three, where you have reached, where you have received Jesus? You've reached out to him. You've received Jesus' forgiveness for your sins. Or are you at step four, where God is asking you to serve and you say, yes, here I am. Send me. See, the order of this is very important. The process of becoming a servant of God begins with our recognition of our helplessness of our own situation. Only when we come to the end of ourselves are we ready to see God. And that vision is absolutely essential to genuine service. See God, then serve God. It has to be in that order. See God, then serve God. Well, for the next few minutes, we're going to try something new. I'm going to give you a chance to see God's holiness by meditating on Scripture. 
It's the song that the angels sang. It's that verse. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. So here's a video that will help you meditate on that truth. 